name is Cordero Smith. I am with certain members of... This has been Dover with LARP News Network, and recently I caught up with members of an elite military unit in the South African military that was gearing up to do some plausible deniability ops in Angola. I spoke with an operative by the name of Cordell Smith, who informed me that his South African accent was actually pretty bad. I am working here with some of the forces of the uh, SADF. Working upon a spin up circle for uh, operations coming up in Angola. Oh, I lost my sling, bro. I lost my fing sling. <laughs> LNN got a rare glimpse hey, into the life of these operatives the and their training methods. Hey, me, this elite military unit has been favoring recently a machine gun known as the RPD. The RPD is a Russian belt fed machine gun chambered in 762 by 39. Sit down, bro. Sit in. Yeah, what's f in there? Come on. Come on. Come on, you motherfuckers! Hey, cameraman. Am I fing dead, bro? Ah? Uh, did I die yet? I need to do some more cardio. Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host of Talking Ball Clava. Today out here with me once again, I have our guest, NSWE. And not Navy Special Warfare Extravaganza, but non-standard weapons engineering. Some good dudes, drop my belt, some good dudes down from Tucson. Now, today we're going over a gun near and dear to uh, all, what's the term, Russian boo, uh, Russian simps, dudes that like Hamblock weapons, the RPD. Now, the RPD is a really sick piece of kit. I'm happy they're out here with us. And I'm really excited to even be holding one because the RPD is just a belt-fed machine. So before we dive into the gun, we're gonna go over the gear real quick. So the gear is actually on loan to me from a buddy of mine. Um, this is a 3-2 Battalion uh, rig, so I was told, all right? Now, I'm gonna take his word for it, and this is actually a pretty cool rig. So, disclaimer, I'm no expert. I am no um, you know, certified bona fide historian on the topic. I am an admirer of this culture of the history. So that being said, let's dive into it. We'll talk about the rig real quick. So this 3-2 rig is actually pretty neat. Um, after I've been running a battle jacket for a bit, getting my hands on one of these, it's like an interesting style webbing. We'll bump over here into the light. So once it's all laid out like this, you can kind of see the whole get up. So you have a little front pouch, you have this little kind of like admin, um, well, this would be more so like your admin pouch, random stuff. It'd be more so an IFAC. Then you have your mag pouches, saddle bags, um, miscellaneous pouch over here for stuff. You get a rear pack. Now it's all flat back here as opposed to say a pattern 83. So you can rock, you know, a parachute, well, which is above my uh, skill set. I'm not parachuting to the flat range yet, maybe one day. Um, and you can rock a backpack for, for long operations in case you have to hump into wherever you're going. Over here as well, a little bit different as to this side. Big saddle bag, two mag pouches over here, and then you got two frag pouches. Um, very cool setup. And then you have, of course, you got um, your compass and other admin pouch up here. Uh, on here, I threw on a, a Haley Strategic darter knife. Uh, pretty Gucci, fun little knife. But I was, I was trying to take it with um, maybe a modern-esque drill vibe, like we like to do here on the channel. So it fits, it fits nicely. These uh, mag pouches hold a belt fed and or belts and or drums rather nicely in the saddlebags. If I was like thinking of this and keep in mind, I'm no high speed guy. So if I was thinking of how we're gonna run through the kit and utilize it in a harm's way, I'd probably do two drums on each side, drum on the gun, and then miscellaneous belts maybe in the bag pouches, in the bag pouches, in the mag pouches. You could probably fit a, a 50 rounder in there if you stuff it in right. And then of course you'd have maybe another 
link of ammo. But we were linking the hundreds together and throwing them in the drum, so it worked out rather nicely. Um, pretty cool rig. They had a different camo for the 3-2 Battalion, so they could have deniability when they were doing their operations in Angola. Um, and there's no, there's no stitching on here of who made the rig. There's nothing like that. It's all taken off so they can have another level of plausible deniability in case one of their operators uh, either got captured or went down behind enemy lines. All right, so that covers the rig. Now, before we go any further, I know you're on the toilet and you, people always in the comment section act surprised when I tell them this because I don't know why, because that's where I watch YouTube videos from, all right? But I know you're on the toilet, so go ahead, like, and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. I know it's YouTube and cheesy, but YouTube does not like gun channels, so anything to help boost the algorithm, I appreciate greatly. Let's bring on our guests. We had it on the channel before in two videos. It's going to be the old Rhodesian FAL video and the Bulgarian AK-74 video. But, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for my guest, NSWE. <laughs> Very good, very good. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Jared, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Spence, good to have you on, gentlemen. I appreciate you coming out and letting me use this RPD for the flat range LARP shenanigans that is this channel. Um, now, my big disclaimer here is we run a big chimp style, right? So as we run a big chimp style, one thing I like to do is absolve myself of any um, wrongdoing in the sense of not knowing what I'm talking about because most of the time I don't. And which I always disclaimer the crowd, I said, don't ever listen to me about anything serious. So this is all about having a good time. So with that, I would hope that you guys know what you're doing with the RPD. So you're gonna have to let the crowd and the audience know what's going on. I can kind of talk to and speak to shooting it briefly, but yet again, this is like my first day out here running one and gunning one. It was a really fun time, but you know, we think of things on the channel as gun guys, we always dive into like the, the fun surface level and then like, all right, how am I gonna use this in harm's way? So without further ado, let's talk about the RPD. Uh, we'll go ahead and dive into a little bit of the history and then how the gun works. And then I'll go ahead and turn it over to Spencer to go over some tactics and the manual of arms for this. So concerning the history, uh, development in Russia really began at the end of World War II, uh, but it didn't really start to see service until the early 50s, uh, and that service was pretty short-lived because it got replaced by the PK, the PKM later on, because um, this just doesn't have the same features. You can't quick swap the barrel, uh, and that leads us into the, to the gun portion a little bit. You can see it works a little bit more like an upside-down AK, mm -hmm. So your gas tube and piston are, are under the barrel. Yeah. Um, and oddly enough, it has a gap over here, which uh, isn't, isn't something super typical that you'd find really in any gun. Um, but it does allow the, the carbon and extra gas to uh, be ported from the gas tube as to not carbon up the system too much. Uh, we are running the Dead Air Wolverine on here, and it's been sounding really good. A lot of people are saying uh, it's exactly like COD. Uh, I seem to have the same opinion. It, yeah. It's really cool sounding, really fun to shoot. Uh, it is an open bolt machine gun, so when you pull the bolt back, it locks, and then when you pull the trigger, the whole assembly comes forward and, and fires the weapon like that. Uh, so it gives a little bit different of an impulse instead of pulling the trigger and immediately getting a click You do have a little bit of lag as everything slams forward uh, But definitely as soon as you get rocking and start ripping belts it, it I think it's a smooth shooter and it yeah. feels good nice heavy platform Bulky chonky boy very good Spencer take it away, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean it's basically uh, what Russia wanted to use as a squad automatic weapon coming out of World War II when they realized that's something they could have used and the DP-28 really wasn't cutting it for them. Uh, those that's, belt For those, though, that's a pizza gun, right? Pizza time. Yeah, it's a pizza gun. Okay. Yeah, this is with a big pancake on top, pizza, whatever you want to do. And, uh, I mean, you're really limited with your rounds on that gun, mm -hmm. uh, so they really went to the belt-fed design. And a lot of these RPDs have similarities. Well, the whole RPD platform has similarities with the DP-28 as well in terms of uh, manual of arms, function, parts compatibility, well, not really parts compatibility, but parts similarities, stuff like right. that. Hold on, before we go any further, can you actually just demonstrate to the crowd how to load up and, and we'll rip a belt real quick. Just, I want to see you do it. Yeah. So we got a, we got a little, a short little belt right there you can grab and just go ahead and load it up and we'll, we'll pop off a few rounds. Cool. Down. Alrighty, so your manual of arms is you're going to go take it off safe here, it's dry. You're going to have a closed bolt, um, gun just went dry, first thing you're going to do Flip that charging handle down so it's out and you get a good le good leverage on it. Bring it back, bring your charging handle back forward. Safety on because now only thing to drop that bolt is the trigger there. You're going to pop your top cover open. Take your belt, get in the gun, get your links on that ramp and the feed tray. 
top cover down and you're hot. All you gotta do is flip that safety back and uh, rip a belt. Oh, I like that. They're good sports about it. But they're badass. And this thing with the can is a ton of fun. It throws fireballs if you take it off. Now, I'll go into kind of like my impressions of what it was like to shoot. Because I'm no mechanical expert like these guys are, but I can kind of tell you the feeling you get. And let me say that it is a large amount of dopamine. So when you're shooting this gun and you are ripping it, the the pleasure sensor in your head of, uh, you know, when you're eating good food, when you're having good sex, it's all firing at like eight cylinders. And it's a blast. So that is a really cool feature about this gun. Um, it's, it's just so hard to go wrong with guns that shoot very fast. So it's also a cool connection to our history. Uh, you know, with guys going over to Vietnam, you know, Mac V. Sog was running it. Uh, Spence was telling me Mac V. Sog, their method, they were using it as like a brush clearing gun where they're doing walking fire. And it was just, they were just hosing down the bush. Uh, as opposed to say where in, you know, Rhodesia or South Africa where guys were using RPDs, it was more accuracy focused, right? Yeah, in, in a sense. I mean, the method he used there was more of a squad automatic weapon as compared to like a walking fire type gun. Um, it was used more in movement. Or, I guess stationary fire as you would use like the modern 240 or 249 or anything like that and uh, yeah and with that too I guess it's not a normal RPD right we chopped ours down to kind of pay some homage to those McAfee saw guys and Rhodesian guys that would actually chop down their RPDs and use them and, uh, and we figured we'd throw the can on there for some modern flare since we were chopping the barrel might as well thread it and do that anyways so it's uh, honestly probably one of our favorite projects we've done so far. It's a cool connection to history. It's a blast to shoot. You know, this should be vending machine legal uh, in our country, but the way politics and our forefathers and, you know, our grandparents and their parents, how they kind of fought for gun rights wasn't as fierce as we fight for gun rights now, right? But with that being said, it's a blast. And um, if you have an opportunity, it's like I'm not trying to sell you an RPD. I'm not trying to sell you any of this stuff. It's more so just for the good time. Gentlemen, you have your shop down in Tucson, right? Correct, yep. Right. In Tucson, Arizona. So what is like the products and service that you provide? Um, what this is, I'm like setting you up to, to self-plug yourself right now, so. Sure, yeah. So at NSWE, um, I mean, it's a part-time job. We've all got our full-time jobs, and we really like to do NSWE for fun and to... Uh, you know, help out the people that enjoy these kind of old guns and want to bring history back to life. So let's break it down for you gentlemen. Okay. Hey, the RPD, all right. Do a good bit of builds, you know, whether it be Galil's, FAL's, AK's, stuff like that. We love all of our weird stuff, RPDs now too, I suppose. Um, and then we occasionally come out with batches of guns, stuff like that. I know we've got a batch of FAL's that we're going to do coming out here soon and uh, maybe some other fun things down the road. But we're, uh, we're just a side gig, man. We like, you know, having people enjoy history and building it back up to what it was back in the day and, you know, really making those guns look and feel like a piece of history come back to life. And those guns can act as almost a time capsule where when you pick up the gun, you start running and gunning with it, it, it kind of brings you back and it kind of puts you that much more into the shoes of those guys that had to use it in harm's way. Of course, we're never going to be as badass as those guys. Not even close, right? Those guys are just some hard dudes, but it's cool to imagine kind of what they went through, um, at least the non-horrific war side of things, but the, the duty and service and, and honor kind of thing, right? Um, I got one of you guys' FAL, actually. I bought an FAL from you guys, and it's it's been doing doing me good, doing the, the Lord's work of FAL-ness. So I'm looking forward to snagging a Galil from you guys. It's always good to support local Arizona guys. It makes me give me the warm fuzzies. You know what I mean. So hey, it was a pleasure having you guys on. Thanks for um, thanks for thanks for, thanks for showing thanks up. Um, I'm gonna kick you out of frame as I do the uh, the closing. So yeah, get out of here. Go. Gentlemen, hey, if you enjoyed this video, you enjoy the channel, feel free to um, support it in any way, shape, or form. I know the past year has been rough with all this big Rona stuff, but um, I appreciate any of the support that you can give. Patreon's an excellent way. Merchandise is an excellent way. Links in the description down below. Get yourself some cool gear, swag, whatever. I don't care. I can't. I hate myself that I did actually just say swag. So, I hate you too. Yeah, I hate me too. All right. Anyway, um, that's all I got for you. You guys have a good one. I will catch you all on the flip.